Have you guys seen the greatest anime series from last year? Now in 2020, we had a number of good anime series that came out with Beastars premiering on Netflix, though I think that had come out earlier in Japan. I'm not 100% sure on that. Along with other Netflix series like BNA, Brand New Animal, Fire Force Season 2, which I personally enjoyed a decent chunk of. We had a lot of sequels this year, a lot. Yet we didn't have a ton of new anime this year because, you know, 2020 decided to be a shit show. We did have a couple of good shows that came out, but by far the absolute best one that came out of last year was The Great Pretender. Now, if you haven't seen The Great Pretender, The Great Pretender is a Netflix original anime series. I say Netflix original, but I think it did air on a Japanese television network before it came to America and the rest of the world with Netflix releasing it. That is not the part I care about, though. What I care about is that it was the best series that came out last year by far, and I will fight anyone that says otherwise. Seriously, I been binged it as soon as it came out and then I was mad at Netflix for not having the rest of it and then I binged this that as soon as it came out as well I've loved it I've actually rewatched the show already it is by far my favorite series of 2020 you have no clue now if you are unfamiliar with the great pretender which if you are how dare you go watch it right now the main character is Makoto Edamura who tries to pull a scam on a Frenchman named Laurent and then gets caught up in one of his more fun, bigger scams. Uh, with the first scam being taking down a American filmmaker slash mafia leader who uses his power to be a dick. Because screw that guy. Through the course of this, Edamura meets Abby and Cynthia, the two other main confidence men that he starts working with. With the four of them basically forming the main team and them being the ones that pull scams. Now, there are a lot of members of this crew as in total. So much that I don't even think we get a name for literally all of them. But one of the really nice things about the show is that it manages to tell you the backstory of pretty much each of the characters without exposition dumping any of the episodes. What I mean by this is each arc deals with a certain character's backstory. The first arc deals with Edamura and his whole story of why he became a conman in the first place. I'm not going to get into a ton of spoilers about that because if you haven't seen the show, you really need to, but it actually is a really nice thing and I kind of like the way it wove into the story. It makes you really feel for this guy and what he had to go through as to why he's stuck in the situation that he is in now. The second arc where they are scamming two brothers who keep rigging airline races, that delves a lot into Abby's backstory and why she is the way she is and why she acts the way she does and that was a lot of fun. The third arc deals with Cynthia's. The final arc deals with Laurent, and you finally find out why he is the biggest douche that he is. Actually, Laurent, it's really mean to call Laurent a douche, really, even though he is. Laurent is very good at what he does. He is very good at tricking people into getting what he wants and making it so that he is able to run and run the games how he wants them to. Uh, basically, he's able to set up the situation so they always fall in his favor. This doesn't mean he is infallible. <sighs> what I mean by that is he is able to get tricked. If he doesn't know the full situation going into something, he is very liable to fall out of it. In fact, Edamura at the end of the show is able to trick him fairly freaking well because Edamura didn't actually reveal any of his full plan to Laurent before the scam began, which made for a really interesting and an epic moment, especially when certain events led to the ending of the series. Again, don't want to get into spoilers, but I kind of hated Edamura for a minute here because he kind of antithesized who he had been up to that point, but he did manage to redeem himself by, you know, doing the right thing in the end, so I guess I can't be too mad at it. Now, here's where I'm going to get interesting because I really want more of this show because I love the concept of scam artists scamming douchebags out of their money because fuck those guys. However, I don't know that I necessarily want the ending of the show to be erased. And what I mean by that is the way the show ends, Edamura is in a much better place than he was before. Certain events from his past have come back and he knows a bit more of the full situation and he feels much more content and happy with where his life is. Laurent has finally let go of his past and is now accepted that he can't really change anything about it and also feels content. Abby and Cynthia, both of them in their arcs respectively, also felt a little more content, though they just enjoy the thrill of running the scams because let's face it that is fun 
But there's an event that happens at the very end of the show, and it personally makes me fear that if we do get more to The Great Pretender, then we are going to lose a good, really decent chunk of development that Laurent had, and it's just going to feel like a backpedal. If they continue, I'm hoping they don't backpedal on a lot of the development that he had, but it's still a possibility. Now, I really want to get into the voice acting real quick, because this is where the most interesting part for me happened. When you start the show, it doesn't matter if you're listening in English or in Japanese, both versions start with the same exact audio. That being basically a Japanese man who knows English and a Frenchman who knows English doing the audio speaking English with their respective accents. That would have been really, really cool to see. However, partway through the show, there is a pause, and depending on which version you're watching, a message pops up on screen saying that the rest of this series will be done in Japanese or English, respective of which you are listening to, at which point you just switch to a regular cast. Now, I personally would have loved it because it's a multinational cast for each of the actors, especially in the American version, to have been speaking in English because they are in America and speaking English for a good chunk of it to be speaking English with the accents that we had heard in the very beginning of the show That would have been really cool Especially because we could have gotten back in Japan. We could have gotten like Japanese audio with like them I, I just think it would have been really cool to have like a multinational cast with a bunch of different accents and dialects that we hear throughout the show Unfortunately, we don't get that and it was lost very quickly But I can't complain too much because Overall, I thought the English voice cast did a very, very good job. I've mentioned this in my previous anime video, Dubs vs. Subs. I personally prefer to watch a show in dubbed. Not for because I'm a casual or anything. I personally prefer dubs because I have ADHD and it becomes really hard for me to track what characters are saying if I have to be reading subtitles the entire time. Again, would have been cool if we had seen them do something with the fact that every character is from a different nation. Laurent speaks like eight different languages. It would have been really cool to hear him speak in each of those languages at some point throughout the show, but I guess that might have been a little bit too much work for Netflix to feel it justifying doing it for the entire series. Again, I personally thought it would have been really, really cool. Final thoughts on the show, the animation is fucking phenomenal. It is brilliantly put together. Everything looks like it flows and it is brilliant. The opening and the entire soundtrack are some of my favorite pieces of music. I could listen to this soundtrack for hours. I love instrumental music. It is some of my favorite things. I just enjoy listening to that kind of stuff, and the jazz tracks that they use throughout this show are great. Again, I would love to see more from this. I want to see where the story continues, if they can continue it, and if it does good. But uh, if I have to give the show a rating, I would rate this a... I would give the show a rating of a 19 out of 20. Not perfect. Again, almost nothing is. But it rolled really fucking high. I binged the entire thing. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. And I binged it literally the second I started watching the show. It is so good. The story is so freaking amazing. I just, if they continue, I would love to see where it goes. But the way the season ends, I think it's nearly perfect as is. And we don't need more from it. But everyone else can, you know, choose and decide what they want for themselves. But yeah, those are my thoughts. If you haven't seen the show, go watch it. It's on Netflix. It is phenomenal, and I hope that you enjoy it pretty much as much as I do. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that video from me talking about The Great Pretender. It's a series I've wanted to talk about for a minute. I just haven't been able to get a ton of thoughts in my brain organized to be able to get them out to you in any sort of normalized fashion. But hey, tell me what you guys thought if you've seen this show down in the comments. Did you like it, hate it, whatnot, you know, everything. But that's all I have for now, guys. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to both of those are going to be in the description down below. As always, I hope they all have a fantastic day, and as always, peace out, guys. <laughs>